Hi, I'm Kale, and I work at the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. I'm here to talk to you about biting plants. It's a topic that's a little strange. Plants that change it up on us instead of being eaten by animals, they eat animals. And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird. So we're going to talk about things like whether we as human beings are safe from them. But uh, let's get started. So plants provide us with so much. You know, most of the food we eat comes from plants. Uh, they make oxygen that we need to breathe in order to live. They provide habitat for so many animals. And for us, I guess, you know, if you consider that uh, the structure of, you know, most houses is made out of wood. So they do a lot for us. Our life is, you know, completely dependent on having them. But what do they need? In order to live, they need sunlight, water, air, and nutrients. Nutrients are substances that a living thing needs to survive and grow. You and I get our nutrients by eating. Uh, plants, for the most part, get them through the soil. They dig, their roots go down in the soil and absorb water and absorb these nutrients. Now, not all soil is the same. So there are some soils that don't have all the nutrients a plant needs. Some plants have a way of getting nutrients that they're not getting from the soil from animals. They're called carnivorous. Carnivorous means eat, eats animals, eats meat. Um, and for the most part, they grow in poor soil, you know, in places like marshes. They are small. That's really important for us to know. They're small. For the most part, they are only harmful to insects. Uh, little bitty insects. But how do they trap how do they trap insects? How do they trap insects? They can't run after them. They can't see them. They don't have muscles to grab them. So how do they get insects? They trick them, basically. They try to do some of the things that a flower does. If you've ever seen a bee around a flower, you'll see the bee buzzing in there and trying to get nectar. Nectar is a substance made by the flower that's very sweet and sugary, has nutrients that insects need. Um, so generally, you know, when a bug sees a something that's brightly colored and smells, smells sweet, they'll think flower. Well, carnivorous plants some, try to duplicate that with the uh, colors and smells. They smell like nectar. You know, we may not be able to smell, you know, smell that, but the, ant, the insects can. So let's look at the most famous carnivorous plant of all, the Venus flytrap. What it does is it, you know, with its color and smell, it draws insects into its leaves that are shaped like traps. And there are these trigger hairs inside and once an insect brushes against two of those trigger hairs, the trap, the trap will close. The plant will pump water into cells in the outside of the trap that will cause them to expand and close down on the insect. And there are these cilia, these hairs on the outside that will kind of act like the bars of a cage, will help hold the insect in. And the trap will actually turn into a stomach. It'll squirt acid, you know, onto the bug to, you know, dissolve its soft parts and then digest them and get those nutrients. About a week later, the trap will open up again, pump water to the inside of the, inside of the leaves and whatever's left of the bug, you know, the crunchy shell will just drop out. Um, Kind of an amazing thing about Venus flytraps, though, is they can do something no other plant can do and very few animals can do. They can count to two. Uh, it takes two of those hairs to be tripped before it's going to close the trap. If it didn't do it that way, um, any time, like, wind, you know, brushed against it, it would probably close. So it doesn't have a brain, but that's a smart thing for it to do. All right but they don't always win. They don't always win. 
you know, especially if they're against, up against something that has a very soft body. Okay, another type of active trap where it, something in it moves is a bladder wart. Uh, it actually eats microscopic insects in the water. And it has these little things that look like floats. And when an insect brushes up against it, it sucks it and all the water in and then digests it. Uh, really small. Another type of trap is the pitfall trap. Uh, the pitcher plant is a good example of this, where an insect will be drawn toward it, and when it lands on the side of the pitcher plant, it will slip down the slippery sides uh, into digestive juices and water at the bottom, where it'll get where it'll get dissolved, just like in the Venus flytrap. This is also um, it also has stiff hairs on the inside, so if it tries to crawl out, the hairs will just it will bend and poke it back. So it'll fall back down in there. So it's it's stuck in the water and it dies and gets digested in there. Another type of trap uh, is adhesive traps. And a sundew is a good example of these. There are lots of different kinds of sundew that live all over the world. But an insect will be drawn to it by sweet smells. And then it once it lands on the plant, it'll be stuck with this very sticky glue-like substance and it can't escape and in many cases, the sundew plant folds in on it. So the insect can't possibly get out and it gets digested. Now, the question is, we've been talking about all these mean and nasty things these plants are doing, but what about us? Are we safe from them? Well, let me show you. Here's a picture of my son taken out of the Missouri Botanical Garden. He, he is holding the pitcher from a species of pitcher plant that grows as a vine, and the pitchers dangle down from above. All right, but look at that thing. He's probably gonna be able to fit his finger in there and all that. It's, it can't eat a human being. The biggest pitcher plants have uh, traps the size of a milk jug. You know, again, that's not big enough for a person. You know, they have been known to trap you know, things larger than insects, like rats, uh, tarantulas. But as far as, as far as we go, we are pretty safe. You know, these plants are small. In many cases, they're very delicate. Uh, the Venus flytrap is, in fact, a vulnerable species in, in its native North Carolina. You, it's illegal to go digging it up out of the ground. Uh, and you know, they need very specific conditions. You know, I've had several die on me. <laughs> All right, they're very delicate plants. We're gonna get a chance to meet some of these plants. All right, here we have a pitcher plant. And here we have two Venus fly traps. See all those, all those traps, all those leaves open. All right, see the trigger hairs? All right, we'll take some closer up pictures of these. But first, I say it's time to do a craft. Let me bring in my assistant. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about carnivorous plants. I hope you know that you as a human being are safe from them. Bye.